proof of God? That's how some people describe castor oil. It is all the rage. Everybody's talking. In fact, my own doctor recently prescribed castor oil to me. I'm like, castor oil? The thing my grandma used to talk about? Like what? So if you've been hearing everybody talking about castor oil as if it was the cure-all, the ultimate, the miracle drug, today I come to you with receipts. I have research that will dispel some of the claims that people make about castor oil, and I also have proof that some of these claims are legit. Hey, my name is Shalene Johnson. Welcome to The Shalene Show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. Now, listen, I'm not one who normally jumps on these trends. I don't. I've been hearing people talk about castor oil for a couple of years now, but it wasn't until recently when my own doctor suggested that I put castor oil on my neck for a vocal cord injury that I had that I was like, what? What are you talking about? Okay, so that piqued my interest and I started doing a little bit of research then. And then recently following a surgery, I had a lymphatic massage from an expert who said, you must use castor oil for your wound care. I'm like, really? Castor oil? On a new incision? Now mm -hmm. listen, I have to preface this by saying, Everything that I'm going to discuss in this episode, even with the research that I'm going to share with you today, and by the way, I will have links to that in our show description. Even with all of that, I want you to know that you should always, always check with your healthcare provider. Even if there are published studies and research, even if there's anecdotal reports that something works, I just want to caution you that like, I'm not a doctor. I just pretend to be one sometimes on my podcast. But I do think it's important because we're talking about things that are, this is not a drug. It's not regulated by the FDA. So we don't know how it's going to counteract with something else you might be taking or some other condition you might have. So please exercise precautions and check with your healthcare provider before using castor oil. I think we all can agree that there are things in nature that it just makes sense that they have been created by God, and they do a better job of healing us in many cases than pharmaceuticals. I mean, not all pharmaceuticals, but like there are certain things where it's no wonder we don't hear a lot about them from our doctors because they're in nature. And so big companies, big pharma can't make a ton of money about, on them. Castor oil is one of those things. Castor oil is, it literally is a miracle oil. Spoiler alert, it is a miracle oil, and I'm sufficiently convinced, and I am a huge fan of castor oil. You heard it here first. And I'm going to share with you the brand that I recommend, and I'm also going to give you, and I don't, I don't care if you buy the brand that I buy, but I'm also going to give you recommendations so that you make sure that you're buying a very reputable brand and so that it's packaged the right way to maintain its efficacy. But castor oil has been used for thousands of years in ancient civilizations like China, Egypt, and India, which by the way, India happens to be one of the primary suppliers of castor oil today. It has been said that Cleopatra used castor oil for beauty regimen, and it has been found in tombs as old as 5,000 BC. So the stuff's been around a really long time. Okay, so when I started doing my research, one of the very first claims that I wanted to look into is I've, I've seen all of these influencers using organic cotton and dousing the organic cotton fabric in castor oil, placing it on their abdomen, then wrapping their abdomen in cellophane or some type of plastic wrap and maintaining that for up to an hour and sometimes even sleeping in overnight and swearing by its ability to reduce body fat through their midsection. Now, I'd love for that to be true, but I Personally, I'm not going to do that unless I could find research to support it, and there wasn't any. There isn't. Any. Listen, I was searching for it anywhere, but there, there just isn't any research to support that it pulls body fat from tissue. What about the claims that castor oil can be used on the neck by something like this? This is just a little device I bought on Amazon, and this side is organic cotton, and you put the castor oil here on this part of the material, place it over the thyroid gland, and where this overnight. A lot of integrative doctors swear by it and they have anecdotal proof that it worked for certain clients. I, however, could not find any research to support that. Now, would it hurt? I don't see how that could cause any harm. Again, I would think that 
the manufacturer of castor oil would want to fund a study to prove that there was some benefit to the thyroid. I'm not saying it does. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just here to present to you the research. My doctor, however, recommended that I use this particular device and put the castor oil again here, place it on my throat, my neck, in an effort to reduce inflammation in my vocal cords. Now, I had a vocal cord injury mm, about uh, a year and a half ago, and I've done vocal therapies for it to reduce the inflammation in my vocal cords. I have one side that's partly paralyzed, and it's altered my voice a little bit. I, like that side of my vocal cord doesn't close. Like when you look at it on a scan or whatever, it doesn't close the way the other side does. So it can make me sometimes feel breathless. It makes me feel like I can't yell. It makes me feel like I'm straining. And it's changed the quality of my voice a little bit. It's made my voice feel deeper. And it doesn't bother me so much, but my voice change doesn't bother me so much, but like the way it feels, the way that I feel like I'm kind of struggling for air sometimes, that's an over-exaggeration. The way it feels like I, I can't have a forceful voice, that bothers me. And so with regard to inflammation, the studies are there. Castor oil is an incredible anti-inflammatory agent, and that is because one of the primary ingredients found in castor oil is ricinoleic acid. Ricinoleic acid is known for its incredible antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties, and there is a slew of evidence, research done, to show how using castor oil helps to improve wound care and reduce tissue inflammation. Okay, so if we know that castor oil is proven to reduce tissue inflammation, you can understand why so many people use it in their beauty care products or part of their beauty care regimen. So is castor oil better than Botox in a bottle? Well, that might be stretching it. Let's face it. Botox works in a very different way. And I've heard people say like, oh, it's the natural form of Botox. Well, Botox is also natural, but it is a toxin, a toxin that when injected into a muscle, it causes a paralysis of the muscle. So the reason why she can't lift her eyebrows right now, and when I say she, I mean me, is because I have Botox in my forehead. Go ahead and hate. I don't care. I love me some Botox. I love it. And it has nothing to do with my age. It has everything to do with my financial situation. The moment that I could afford Botox at I think probably about age 32, I was like, sign me up. Let's go. I love it. It just smooths everything out because then these muscles, they're basically paralyzed. Now I've I've made some mistakes with Bo like not to go on a tangent about Botox. I've told you guys this before. Like I got Botox around my eyes once and I hated it because I couldn't, I couldn't squint my cheeks up. So I felt like I was smiling like dead face, looked really weird. Oh, and then another time I had a doctor who's like, you know, if we do a little bit, bit of Botox around your mouth, then um, it'll relax these lines. I'm like, oh, okay. But yeah, but like when you relax the muscles around your mouth, there's a lot of other things you can't do too, including speak properly or smile properly. I was like, it was so weird. And you can't suck through a straw or suck on anything for that matter. Back to castor oil. So is castor oil better than Botox? Well, they work in very different ways. So again, Botox is going to paralyze a muscle, which smooths out the skin. In terms of castor oil, it's going to reduce inflammation, which then can smooth out wrinkles and might make you look less puffy. But in terms of like filling your face like a filler or relaxing muscles, it's not doing that. It may have many wonderful properties for your skin and your lips. Without question, however, it helps to reduce inflammation. So I've started using castor oil in my nighttime routine where I am, you know, using my own knuckles to do kind of a lymphatic face drainage. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the way that I keep my jawline snatched course, makeup doesn't hurt either. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out the episode that I did on how I uh, change the shape of my face by doing a couple different things. And one of which is the nighttime face massage. But now by using the anti-inflammatory oils, I'm so excited about the research behind it. I'm like, yes, let's make all of this inflammation go away, like puffiness under your eyes, etc. When we're talking about the beauty uses of castor oil, you might be wondering, should I be using it in my hair? Because I've heard and seen tons of TikToks and reels of ladies talking about how it's helped them tremendously with hair growth. And I'm sorry to say, despite looking for 
the research, there isn't any research to show that castor oil is the best oil to use for your hair. In fact, there are lots of other oils that are proven to be much more effective when it comes to hair growth. Okay, we're gonna stop talking about castor oil for just a second, and I just wanna let you know that like right now, I have a series on Patreon that is popping off. Like people are going crazy. And I'm doing a deep dive into the rise and ruin of Rachel and Dave Hollis. Now, this is not a mean girl takedown. This is a really unique perspective, I think, because I'm in the same industry and married and with a husband who we did a lot of the same things on video and online at the same time and and written books. And there's just a lot of parallels and a lot of um, people that we're connected with at the same time. I just have a very interesting take on all of it. And I think it's a real commentary, a sad commentary on society and how we tend to worship influencers and people who are popular and how we get all caught up and think that these people are deities. And anyways, uh, it's a several part series. My Patreon, if you're, if you've never done Patreon, you can try it for free for seven days and you can binge that content. But like, yeah, it's, it's some pretty good stuff. So if you're looking for some juicy, juicy, uh, the link will be below. It's patreon.com forward slash the Shaleen show. All right, back to castor oil. What about eyelash and eyebrow growth? And while I was not able to find any research to substantiate the use of castor oil for lash growth, I can tell you that there are, I mean, and I'm sure people are going to be commenting under this video right now on YouTube or in the pod squad or on Patreon, wherever it is you leave your comments. If you've used castor oil and seen an increase in your lashes, let us know. Every single video I've watched of people talking about castor oil, there's so many people under it saying like, my lashes, I swear by it. Here's what I do know. There is research to support the use of castor oil to improve a condition known as dry eye. And guess who has chronic dry eye? Yes, yours truly. However, again, I need to caution you. This is not something you want to go into willy-nilly. I want you to talk to your ophthalmologist before applying castor oil into your eyes for the improvement of dry eyes. I will link to that study so you can read more about it. You can learn more about how they actually applied the castor oil to the eye. I can tell you this. Um, You have to make sure that you are using the right type of castor oil. You want to make sure there's no contamination and how you apply it into the eye is very specific. So it's not something I'm necessarily recommending you do. I just want you to know that there is research to support it does improve dry eye. What about the use of castor oil for digestion and liver detox? Well, I don't know whether it would be considered a liver detox, but I can tell you castor oil has shown to have promising results in treating liver infections, stomach aches, and constipation. Castor oil's diverse phytochemicals exhibit an anti-inflammatory and antioxidant actives, which are beneficial for both liver and digestive health. Again, I will link to these studies. And as for the use of the transdermal preparations, like where where you're putting something on top of an area uh, to treat that area, this is what some of the studies say. Transdermal preparations containing castor oil have been analyzed for their antibacterial and antioxidant properties. These preparations showed efficacy in wound healing and suggesting potential use for skin care, treatment of skin wounds, and dry skin. So let's talk about dry skin. I recently started using castor oil uh, on my skin. Now it's thicker and it's a little goopier than some of the other oils that I've been using. And I actually kind of like that because some of the other oils I was using on my skin, which as we age, I don't know about you, but like the skin got really dry. And so using nice oils has been a great way to just keep my skin plump and feeling young. However, not oils are made the same. You want to use something that's all natural. So I love using castor oil, but let's face it, it doesn't smell great. So when I'm using castor oil to keep my skin nice and moist, I I like to add essential oils into them. And these aren't brands that I'm sponsored by or anything. I I just get these on Amazon. Uh, It's called Gaia Labs, and they've got lots of different fragrances. I can tell you some combinations I really like. And maybe some of you, you know, you love your essential oils. Let us know what brands you like. Um, I like to mix the vanilla and pink grapefruit. I also like to mix vanilla and Australian sandalwood. So I mix those with my castor oil and put that on the skin. But why is it people are so crazy about castor oil? Like literally I've watched so many videos where they claim what's in this bottle, castor oil is proof of God. I love that idea 
And um, certainly, I don't need anything in a bottle to know that God exists. But I think the reason why people say that is because it's from nature. And it it's crazy how there are certain things in nature, including castor oil, even mm-hmm. something like CBD. Like when I would hear people talk about CBD, I'm like, how can it heal pain and also reduce inflammation and also calm you and also make you feel like you've got more energy? Like what? How can I do all of those things? And there are certain elements of nature that help to calibrate our central nervous system and CBD being one of those. Castor oil has these properties where it's almost like it knows what it needs to heal. And I think that there are, when we don't mess with nature in that way, I think there are incredibly miraculous ways in which natural, all natural ingredients, things that have existed for thousands of years can be used to help us in ways we never imagined. As promised, I'll share with you the brand that I use, and I encourage you to do your own research. But um, when you are looking for a reputable brand, you want to make sure that purity is number one. You want to look for one that is 100% pure castor oil. The label should say that it's 100% pure and free of any other ingredients. Also, make sure that you're buying one that is cold pressed. It is the cold press process that helps the oil to retain all of its natural properties. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're buying one that's organic so that it's been grown and processed without any pesticides or additives. You also want to make sure that it's hexane free. Um, hexane is additive that's often used with oils, and you want to make sure yours doesn't have hexane because it is considered safer and purer. You also want to make sure that you're buying one that is in a dark bottle because that'll preserve the efficacy of the castor oil. It does degrade when it's exposed to light, so you want to make sure it's in a dark bottle and ideally a glass bottle. Because the properties of castor oil are known to kind of break things down, it can begin to break down the uh, plastic walls of a plastic bottle and degrade. So always look for one that's in a, a, a a glass bottle. I'll show you mine. This is a glass bottle and that'll help it from degradation. It'll also help it to stay pure longer. You also want to make sure that you're buying one from a reputable brand. You know, I, I'm I'm not always a fan of buying things on uh, Amazon. I prefer to buy them like directly from a store, like a health store where they sell castor oil. But, you know, not everybody lives in an area where there's like a Whole Foods. So if you are going to buy on Amazon, just make sure you're buying directly from, if you can, directly from the manufacturer. Because anytime there's something that's popular on Amazon, there are dupes. And you would swear that you're buying like the actual from the actual company. And I can't even tell you the number of cosmetics and supplements that I've heard from my audience that they've purchased that it, they end up getting something that was expired. So that's the other thing is always look at the expiration date. So again, if you can try to buy one from a health food store, or if you're going to be buying one, you could also buy one directly from the manufacturer. Always store your castor oil in a cool, dark place away from sunlight. You will notice that uh, it doesn't have much of a smell. This is a little bit of a smell. And a pure castor oil is, is going to be thick thicker and kind of yellowish in color. The one that I use is Queen of Thrones castor oil. I just take the label off because I think the label is kind of ugly. I wish it would make a pretty label. I'm going to make my own label and put it on this, but it, it is a glass bottle and I will link to it in our show description. All right. Yeah. So I recently had a surgery and I am using castor oil on my incisions to help them heal and they're healing so crazy fast. I hope that was interesting and helpful to you. Again, if you want to check out that video on how I do the face massage, um, I will link that below in our show notes. You can also watch it on YouTube. I just want to thank you for taking a moment to double check and make sure that you got me a birthday present because it's my birthday. Like you're watching this on my freaking birthday if you're watching it the day that it came out. And the only thing, the only thing I asked for my birthday is that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel Or if you're listening to this episode on an audio podcast, then the only thing I want for my birthday is can you write me a review of the show and tell me what your favorite episode was and why you loved it, okay? Now, if you have nothing nice to say, then I don't want that birthday present. (laughs) But if you are on YouTube and you're leaving a comment, all you need to say is like, happy birthday, I subscribed. That's all the gift I want. That's it. Because... Words of affirmation are my love language. What's your love language, by the way? You could let me know that in the comments too. If you're already subscribed, you're like, I did that. I gave you your gift a long time ago. 
then let me know in the comments what your love language is because I'd love to know. Hey, thanks for being here. I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon. Oh, hey, here comes Fred Johnson. Hey, honey, come in. Say hello to everybody. We're, we're, we're talking to my friends right now on YouTube. What are they doing? They're listening to me talk about castor oil. You look so handsome right now. Thank you. You look pretty. Thanks. You got your vintage Chanel. Yeah. Person. Yeah. It's um, the mob wife trend. Not really. It's just called an outfit. Like, I don't even get this whole mob wife trend. It's like, what? That's not a trend. This is an outfit. Someone's just dressed this way. Awesome. I love you.